Welcome to Yesu Mafra Downfall. It's a great and exciting channel. Hello guys, welcome to Yesu Mafra Downfall. I'm Auntie Aradua and it's always such a great, great joy to be in your homes or wherever you find yourselves. How has your week been? My week has been super, super amazing. In fact, I have a testimony which I'm going to share with you one day. So you know guys, in the past couple of weeks, we've been, we've been learning about the beginning. We've learned about creation, we've learned about Adam and Eve, we've learned about the first siblings, um, Cain and Abel, and one killed the other. And just last week, we learned about the great flood. Now guys, men began to multiply after the flood. They began to increase and something strange, strange happened. Do you want to know? Stay tuned guys, we'll learn more after the song. was so very sad people became so bad he decided he would start over there was a faithful man and he could lend a hand this faithful man was known as Noah Noah was told by God that there would be a flood to clear the world from all its evil Noah must build a knock through daylight and through dark before the rain starts to fall in Came the animals marching two by two down Came the rain and flooded the world right through Out came the sun shining, that's when no one knew God saved them all from the flood Animals of every kind, two of each is what you find Made their way on board The rain then came to sight for forty days and nights And all on board was saved Marching two by two down Came the rain and flooded the world right through Out came the sun shining, that's when no one knew God saved them all from the flood Then sunshine finally came, just like God had arranged And the rain finally ended Water began to dry, a rainbow in the sky Welcomed them all back to land Our memory verse for the month of July, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, Amen. Guys, I am super duper ready for today's Bible story and I'm sure you also get your super book ready, get your Bibles ready and let's dive deeper into the word of God for today's Bible story. Our Bible story for today is titled, The Tower of Babel. What is a tower? A tower is a very high or a very tall building that you need staircase and very tall structures to access it. So our Bible story for today is titled, The Tower of Babel. And our scripture text is taken from the book of Genesis, still in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Let's have our Bible story for today. <laughs> God made the world and in the beginning, everything was beautiful. But as time moved on, God was not happy with how people had become and he destroyed the world in a gigantic flood in which everybody died. God protected Noah and his family so that they could live happily and have children and grandchildren. Over time, 
Noah's children and grandchildren multiplied and spread out all over the world. A certain group of people found themselves in the land of Babylonia. It was a great land with vast plains and perfect for a large group of people to settle down and start their lives. The people all spoke the same language and were united in building a great town for themselves. Nimrod was the king of this land and he wanted to be known as the greatest king of the whole world. Babel will be famous all over the land and I, King Nimrod, will be known as the most powerful king of all. We must have a symbol that shows this to everybody. Your Majesty, we could build a tower, a magnificent tower, so high that it touches the sky. That's a very good idea, Minister. We should build this tower right in the center of town. People will come from all corners of the world to see it. It will remind them that King Babel is the most powerful man ever for ages and ages to come. Minister, send out the order to make preparations to build the tower at the earliest. Yes, Your Majesty. This will be done as you wish. And so, work on the tower began. The tower was built by thousands and thousands of people. Almost all the people of Babylon were ordered to help with building the tower. The king even ordered people from outside the kingdom to help with the building of the tower. Jared, this is not done. Work is moving too slowly. The king wants this tower finished in the next two months. At this rate, it won't be finished in ten years. Sir, these are all the men I have. They are working the whole day without rest. The tower will never be finished in two months, sir. Don't be stupid, Jared. You know the king will not listen to any excuses. How many men do you want? I will get them for you. Even if I add more men, we need time to make the bitumen tar. And also the bricks need to be dried in the sun for at least one day before we can use them for building the tower. Let them work in the night time, I don't care. This tower must be finished in the time set by the king. Or you stand to lose your head, do you understand? Okay, give me 200 more men and a thousand lamps so that they can work in the night. I will try my best. God was looking on at the way the people of Babylon, and especially the king, was working towards making Babylon a great city, and he felt angry and sad. He saw that the king Nimrod was consumed by greed and pride, and had only selfish thoughts about making himself great and powerful. I see that they are achieving all this because they all speak the same language. I will make them all speak different languages so they will not understand each other. This will stop them from performing this act of pride. And so, from the next day morning, everybody was speaking different languages. Nobody could understand what anybody was saying. The slaves could not understand the supervisors, and the supervisors could not understand what the minister was saying. And so, God stopped the Babylonians from building the Tower of Babel and put an end to the selfish king's plans. The people of Babylonia, who were now speaking different languages, spread to other parts of the world and built their own different civilizations. When the people of Babylonia started with work on the Tower of Babel, the meaning of the word Babel was gateway to heaven. However, after people started speaking different languages, the word meant confusion. And this is why we say someone is babbling 
when he or she seems to be talking about something that does not make sense. Lessons from our Bible story. In our previous lesson, God saves Noah. We learned that man became very wicked on earth, but God found the righteous man, Noah. God asked Noah to build an ark as he was going to destroy the world with water. Guys, Noah was obedient and with the help of his family, built the ark that kept his family and male and female species of all animals. In our world today, in our school, in our families and in our church, we can be different. We can be set apart like Noah, not following the crowd and doing bad, bad things, but living for God and God alone. In today's story, the Tower of Babel. Guys, after the flood, men increased and multiplied, but they refused to fill the earth. They refused to scatter, which was what God commanded in the beginning, multiply and fill the earth. So in unity, they decided to build something for themselves, a very tall building that is a tower to reach the heavens. God realized it from heaven and said, because the people are united, because the people are one, there is nothing they can't do. There's something we can learn here, guys. Are you united with your siblings, your mom and your dad, your family? Guys, when people are united, like the people of Babel, you are able to do great things. You can come together with your siblings to pray, to sing worship songs or hymns, study the Bible, and the heavens will shake. You will invoke the presence of God or you can decide to read books together or study together. When a family is united in prayer, the devil cannot stand them. Do you do family devotions at home or do you even enjoy family devotions or you grumble? If you don't do family devotions at home, you can tell mommy or daddy and you can start something as a family. And if you don't enjoy family devotions, henceforth, Please enjoy family devotions because it brings the family together and it shakes the heavens. Guys, the people were disobedient. God says, scatter, fill the earth. They say, no, we want to stay in one place. That is pride and disobedience. I believe none of us are like that. Even if you are henceforth, I know you have changed. I know you listen to your teachers at school. I know you listen to your mom and your dad. When they tell you to eat that food or stop watching that TV program or to do your homework or to stop playing, I know you will listen. Guys, God created us to humble ourselves and worship him. Everything we do must point to God and not to ourselves. The way we dress, the way we talk must point to God. Our ways, our actions must point others to God and not to project us. We are beautiful because God made us so. The people of Babel were full of pride. They wanted it to be said of them that they and they alone built the tower for themselves. They wanted to take God out. Guys, we can never take God out of our lives. Never, ever. He works in us to be brilliant. He works in us to be intelligent, to be strong, to be beautiful, to be healthy, and to be fearless. So let us use the gifts, the potential, the beauty, the strength he's given us to build things for him and to be humble like Jesus. Whilst he was here on earth, he never bragged about the power he had or being God's son. If you are always first or second in class, don't say, I am very intelligent. I am the most intelligent. I am the smartest. No, no, no. You say, it is by the grace of God I am intelligent. It is God who has given me the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. When you do that, guys, God is elevated. God becomes great and bigger and bigger and he blesses you even the more. Finally, guys, God came down to confuse their language. So the people scattered all over the earth. They started building cities for themselves. This was to prove to them that God is the greatest of all. Hallelujah. Guys, have you spoken to Jesus today? Jesus is in your heart as always and he's at 
all places at the same time. I would love, love, love to hear from you this morning. This morning, we'll be praying against the spirit of disobedience. We don't want to be like the people of Babel. God says, scatter. They say, no, we want to reach heaven. We want to pray against building things for ourselves rather than building for God. Also, we want to pray for the spirit of unity in our homes and in our families that will bind us together because we believe that if we are bound together, there is nothing we cannot do as a family. And finally, in Ghana here right now, West Africa, there is a new virus spreading so far. It has killed two people. They say it's like Ebola according to the news. So we want to be praying against this virus that he doesn't spread. It seizes and it ends in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to be alive. Indeed, it is by your grace, it is by your mercies. You keep us, you preserve us, and we are so grateful. We thank you for today's word that has come to us. Lord, help us not to be disobedient children, whether in our homes, in our schools, or even to your word. Help us to be obedient children. Help us that whatever you have asked us to do in our individual homes, we'll be able to live by them in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't want to be like the people of Babel who disrespected and disregarded your word. Lord, we pray for the spirit of unity amongst our siblings and with our parents, that together we'll be able to build great foundations in our home. Now, as we sit together in our devotions, as we sit together in our homes with one accord in the spirit of unity, we'll be able to build such a great family for you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we also know that you have deposited great things and great skills in us to be able to help build things for you, God. Help us be able to build things for you and not for ourselves. Things that will expand the kingdom of God, not things that will disobey or disregard or disrespect your will. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this new virus that is in Ghana, West Africa, we come against its spread in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not going to spread like the coronavirus. It is going to end abruptly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we answer, may you continue to preserve all children in Ghana and across the world, across Africa, across Australia, across Europe, across USA and the entire world. We thank you for an answered prayer and we know that even as we go throughout this week, Lord, you'll be with us, you'll keep us, you'll preserve us. In the mighty name of Jesus. guys so every weekend on the ASMR of our downfall we receive instructions from God from the Holy Spirit on how to be the best version of ourselves to be just like Jesus so it is my prayer that none of us none of us will miss heaven for anything none of us are going to exchange heaven for any other thing because remember as always when I get to New Jerusalem I'll be looking out for you 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 and you out there so don't let anything prevents you from going to heaven and remember next week god dwelling is the last saturday of the month of july yay and finally we're going to have our practical planting class so get your your planting apparatus ready guys i hope you enjoyed today's lesson and you learned something new god bless you so much for tuning in today i'll see you next time bye bye on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Yes.
Fred Down. 